Hello everyone and welcome to the video. You join me here part way through making some marshmallow bean bags. I call them marshmallow just because they're that shape. They're very similar proportion wise and shape to a marshmallow. I've already part made these and what I'll do is I'll just show you now the dimensions and the cut pieces. So this is a diagram of the pieces you'll need. You'll need two circles, 65 centimetres diameter. Okay, one for the top and one for the bottom. And then you'll need a strip of fabric, 40 centimetres high, so this will make the side, and the length of it this way has got to fit round this circle. So you need to calculate the circumference of the circle, which we all know from our schoolgirl maths is pi times diameter. And you need to cut one of these pieces. What will probably happen is if you're using a standard furnishing fabric, which is one, three, seven centimeters wide, um, it won't be wide enough to go all the way around this circle. You'll need to put a join in it, which is probably falls about there. Now that join, you can pattern match. When it gets around to the, the final join, obviously that's just wherever the pattern happens to meet. And if it's a plain fabric, doesn't matter at all. In fact, if it's a plain fabric, you can turn this and cut it up the piece of fabric so you don't have any joins at all. Okay, so to get the pi times diameter, pi is 3.1417, and the diameter, as we know, is 65 centimeters. So multiplying 3.1417 times 65 gives you 204.2 centimeters that's how big that needs to be so that would be 204.2 centimeters so those are your pieces so far i've overlocked around the edge all around the, the edge of the circle of both circular pieces if you haven't got an overlocker you can use a zigzag stitch and I've also overlocked across the top here, the bottom here, and each end. And I've already joined a pattern matched here, a seam. Um, so just make sure all your edges are overlocked or zigzagged. Now I've done that, and then what I've done is I've sewn one of the circular pieces to this what I have so far is that sort of shape and I've stitched around there and I've got the other one to do so I'm going to show you how I do that and obviously you, you'll see a couple of seams as I'm going around so I've already sewn one of the circles on the bottom and the side as I've just explained and I'm just getting ready to sew the circle on the bottom and what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave a gap for the zip i just roughly folded the circle into four like a it, so it looks like a piece of pie just so i could pin in quarters around the circumference and then i did the same with the straight piece i folded it in half and half again so i could get those same quarter distance points on the straight piece and then matched up the two lots of pins. So it'd give me a guide to follow to make sure that I get the circle to fit properly. And then what I do is I sew on the straight piece side rather than on the circle side, just because the circle, because it's cut across the weave in different angles, it being a circle, um, you'll get different stretchiness, like as if it was cut on the bias in places. So rather than contend with that, I've sewn it on the side of the straight piece, so I've got an even tension. Okay, so that's two thirds of the circle sewn on, and I've got my continuous zip here and a zip end. I'm just gonna put the zip end on, and then just rather than measure a piece of zip out, having already calculated it, which I haven't, 
I'm just going to lay it on and gauge the size of it. I'm just changing my foot from a standard foot to a half foot so or a zipper foot so I can get up against the edge of the zip in and so in, on the straight side again so the 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 side piece rather than not round the circular piece because I don't want to get that weird stretching I know that the tension's right on a nice straight edge so I've done that and then I'm just laying the two edges together and easing in any extra fullness that the circle nearly always gives you just pin it roughly i pinned it here probably about every six inches or so just as a guide and then I've, again i'm sewing against the zip but now with the circle underneath and then as i go i'm easing the circular piece underneath just to get rid of any fullness without puckering it and then just work your way along to the other end and the zips over length by probably about a couple of centimeters each end so it extends beyond the end of my opening so now i'm going to turn it through right sides out and then i'm just going to let that zip and naturally flop to one side. It's very hard to explain this without physically doing it in front of you. But as it, as it lays flat, it creates a natural flap or fold in the velvet to cover up the zip. And you can see me just laying it down there and easing it with my fingers. And it's probably like about a centimetre, the fold, and it just covers up the zip. And I put, I'm quite liberal with the pins here. I've put quite a few pins in. and then putting it back under the machine and then just so to hold that flap and create a, a cover for the zip. And at each end, I'll turn it and sew straight across the end by a couple of centimetres to give it a lot of strength because you're going to put quite a lot of force on this when you're stuffing it with beans, with a bean bag. So it needs to be strong. There we go, there's me turning it and a few tacks back and forth. And that's that done. So I'm just going to snip it, tidy it up. And then finally, I'm going to top stitch around all the seams. I'm continuing on basically from the end of the zip first. And what I've done is I've folded the seam inside down the side. So rather than opening the seam up like you would normally and press it, I've allowed both layers of the seam to, to fold flat down the side of the bean bag. And then I've just top stitched really close, perhaps a mil, a couple of mil from the seam. And it gives it a really nice, neat, flat, more upholstered looking finish. And obviously it strengthens it. So I'm back with the second cover, and this is the coordinating fabric. I've sewn the top on, I've sewn the bottom on and left the opening, and I'm just putting the zip in. So again, there's the zip sewn in. In fact, you can see a bit clear on this one. And then just laying it down just to, to make sure that you've got the tension even between the pins. Just pinning it every four or six inches or so. And then machining that zip into place. So right up against the zip itself, the, the zipper with the half foot and lining up your stitch lines with the seam that you've already done with the, the circular top or bottom, in fact, in this case. So there we go, that's both sides of the zip sewn on. 
turned it through. And then I'm just folding that flap, just easing it as I go so it's nice and even. And then bobbing a few pins in to hold it in place. And you can do this open or close, actually. On the, the pattern velvet, I did it closed. I've just realised on this one, the zip's open. So actually it doesn't matter. Because your zip's in now, it's in place, so it doesn't really matter. As long as you know that that flap that you're creating is going to cover up the zip. So there we go, back underneath and top stitching the zip in place. So starting going across the end of the seam first. Remember to fold the seam allowance seams inside, fold them down the side rather than opening them out. And you have to do a certain amount of easing doing this so you don't get any puckers or twists. The fabric tends to want to push towards you and create some weird twists in. And so you have to ease it in with your fingers and sort of fight with it a bit to get a nice, flat, neat flap. And back underneath just to finish that top stitching. You can change your foot back to a standard foot if you want to, it's probably easier, but I tend to just keep the half foot on because uh, it saves me changing it again. So I'm top stitching around the circle, continuing on from where the zip ended. This is one of the two inners that I've already made. I made these first and they're really simple. Um, I made these out of, um, these needed to be FR, so actually I made these out of F FR blackout lining. Um, and it made them quite structurally firm, which was good. They're much simpler to make these. There's obviously the gap doesn't need to be very big because you're not putting a zip in, just big enough to get the beans in. And from a 10 cubic feet bag of beans, I had a bit left over. In fact, you can just see them behind there in, in, the, in the video. And actually, I could have got all that in. If I put all of it in, it would have been a much firmer, poof-like bean bag. So it seems to be just the right quantity. But I wanted these, you know, to have a, a sort of, um, a bit of sag in them in the top so you could form a seat. So I'm just hand sewing up the, the opening and I'm using quite small stitches so obviously the beans don't come out <laughs> um, and a double thread so it's nice and strong because you know people jump on bean bags and they you don't want to, a bursting bean bags with beans everywhere I've already got them in my workroom floor and I tell you they get everywhere <laughs> so um, be quite vigilant with that get a, get a really good strong uh, stitch going so here I am stuffing the plain bean bag now like I said, the gap was quite small and I just wish I'd made it six inches bigger. But it went in. You just have to sort of arrange the beans, shall we say, <laughs> and give it a bit of a beating. And then once the, the inner's in, you've got to um, arrange it inside as well to make sure that it matches shape-wise. Otherwise, it won't sit correctly. There you go. You see me manipulating it and fighting with it to get it right. But it's worth the effort. Zipped up. That's one done. Testing. Very nice. There's the other one I've already done. And relax. So these are then finished. It's a really beautiful Linwood fabric. And I think the one at the back is an Osborne and Little fabric. But that's a velvet, the Linwood one. Absolutely beautiful. In fact, they were both nice, these fabrics. They went really well together. And you can just see the top stitching there. So that's around the, that's the top of the side, around the circle, a little bit of top stitching. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful. But ask below if you've got any questions at all. And do take a minute, if you would be so kind, to like the video if you're enjoying it. And also subscribe, because then you won't miss any new videos that are put out. And if you click the little bell icon and select all, it'll notify you every time I upload a new video. Thank you.